Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi everyone Well, first of all, we want to say thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Because of His mercy so that we are always in a good condition Prayers and greeting gives to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam As the best revolutionary and the best role model for us And also for our honorable lecturer, Mem Ika Sastrawati Thank you for teaching us for this semester, ma'am Thank you so much Well, in this video, we will try to explain about syntactic linkage. But before that, let me introduce our group. We are from the second group, and the, and the members are: the first is Makvrianti as the first speaker, the second is Rika Rukmayana as the second speaker, and the third is Astiani as the third speaker. And the last is Pitriani, me as the first speaker. Okay, in this video, we will try to explain about syntactic linkage, which is includes three parts. The first is syntactic linkage in English will be explained by the first and the second speaker. And the second uh, part is number in English will be explained by the third speaker. And the last is gender in English will be explained by the fourth speaker. So, to make it effective, happy watching, and here we go! Thanks for the chance that has given to me in this video as a first speaker. I would like to explain about the linkage in English, especially the word order in Latin, and also the word order in English translation. So, as we have learned in chapter 8 about the active declarative construction, there are four term that there are four terms that we have to follow there are four terms that we have to know so the first is about subject and object nouns never preceded by preposition jadi formnya seperti ini jadi katanya subject dan uh, object noun itu tidak pernah berada di depan uh, preposition kata tidak pernah berada di depan kata preposisi And then the second point is subject noun immediately the left of the verb. Jadi bentuknya seperti ini. Jadi subject nounnya itu selalu berada sebelum verb. And then the third point is the direct object noun is immediately the right of the verb. Jadi katanya direct object noun itu selalu berada di sebelah kanan atau setelah kata kerja. Jadi verb dulu and then we add, add the direct object noun word. Uh, the last point is the last point is uh, the adjective the adjective the adjective itu bisa ditambahkan noun kemudian nounnya itu berada di sebelah kiri adjective. So it is the the four terms in declarative construction that we have to know and then look at the Look at the example that I want to write in this whiteboard. Alright, this is the example of word order in Latin. So actually, I don't know how to, how exactly to pronounce it, but I will try. Jadi katanya, Corberus et nullas hudi petat improbus umbras. So, in the book, explain that nullas is an adjective. Nulas is an adjective and improbus also is an adjective. But yang sulit di sini adalah nulas as an adjective itu menjelaskan umbras the last word in this sentence and then improbus explain corberos. Jadi sulit ketika Uh, adjektif di kalimat di kata ketiga menjelaskan uh, umprabus di kata terakhir kemudian umbra uh, improbus menjelaskan uh, kata pertama di kalimat ini but tidak semua uh, contoh dalam bahasa latin itu tidak semua this is an this is a line of poetry poetry but uh, tidak semua tidak semua contoh puisi serumit ini. So we move to the next uh, example. It is it is about a word order in English translation. Alright, this is the next example of 
word order in English translation. Translation. So, let Focalisius Cerberus seek no shadows. Jadi di sini yang pertama kita lihat dulu Focalisius. Focalisius adalah kata sifat. Focalisius is an adjective. Kemudian di buku menyatakan bahwa Corberus ini didahului oleh Focalisius. Jadi sudah benar, formnya sudah benar bentuknya bahwa Focalisius ini berada di depan Corberus. And then, seperti yang tadi bahwa uh, kita lihat formnya, uh, di sini ada verb, kemudian ada shadows as a noun. Verb itu berada sebelum noun. Jadi bentuknya seperti ini Seek is a verb And then shadow is a noun Jadi Formnya sudah benar Oke okay. So That is uh, two examples Of linkage in English The first is the example of Word order in Latin And the second is the word order In English translation So that's why tadi dikatakan Di, di paragraf pertama English, uh, Linkage in English Mengatakan bahwa uh, Linkage in English itu Lebih mudah dibandingkan Linkage in uh, Latin Latin itu sebenarnya Latin itu lebih sulit uh, Susunannya word ordernya itu lebih sulit Dibandingkan word order Di Uh, English translation karena uh, jarak antara yang dijelaskan dengan yang menjelaskan itu cukup jauh kemudian untuk menyembuhkannya itu uh, cukup rumit sedangkan dalam bahasa Inggris jarak antara kata yang dijelaskan dan menjelaskan itu selalu berdekatan jadi ini 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 makanya dikatakan that's why dikatakan linkage itu keterkaitan antara kata yang satu dengan kata yang lain membentuk suatu makna. Thank you. Now, I would like to continue the material of linkage in English about word order in Latin and also word order in English translation. The first example or Latin is he told her the whole story. And the second is, she told him the whole story. And then, example also order in the right object or object is, the other plane she rejected or of hand. And then, to her eldest, soon she left the Augustan tapestries. The noun and its modifier are next to each other, but the whole noun phrase in unusual position in the clause and this is example. Mm, there are three examples. The first is the face got broken that Sayla had broke all the way from Chicago. And the second is The plan was rejected out of N, track should be banned. And the last is the idea, this might the prime minister, the dome was dull. I think that's all, thank you. I'm Astiani as the third speaker. Well, I will explain about number in English. The person number relationship between subject, verb, and noun in English is simple compared with the large number of suffixes in Latin. Yet the English system is not straightforward. One complexity is the while we are here focusing on the verb system in standard English. Most of the population of the UK speak some non-standard variety. Many non uh, many non standard varieties the first uh, the first uh, differ from uh, the standard one in some speaker have generalized the s suffix to all person uh, for example we sit quickly in the classroom you know what i'm talking about eh, pada di sini pada kalimat tersebut sit uh, sit And noun 
menampe merupak eh, mendapatkan tambahan eh, suffix s oleh karena itu eh, ini dapat dikatakan sebagai eh, ini menunjukkan bahwa orang eh, banyak orang yang melakukan tersebut nah, even stand, eh, even speaker of standard in this itself disagree over um, with whether a singular or plural verb should be used with certain nouns. For instance, committee is a singular noun but is used to refer to groups or more than one person. Many speakers and writers use either a singular or a plural uh, verb depending on what they they would view a particular a particular committee a single uh, a several person people or a single unit for example the committee are discussing the proposal today nah pada kalimat ini the committee are discussing this proposal today ini lagi menun ini menunjukkan ada beberapa orang di mana Uh, di sini di mana dapat kita lihat itu ada penambahan R. Nah R di sini menunjukkan banyak orang. Nah pada kalimat eh, contoh kalimat lainnya itu contohnya the committee is discussing the proposal today. Pada kalimat ini uh, ini lebih menunjukkan kepada satu orang saja atau a single unit. Dapat kita lihat. Uh, the committee is discussing the proposal today. Itulah ada uh, it di situ menunjukkan uh, pada, uh, pada satu orang saja. Oke, okay, for the next material will be explained by the first speakers. Please, time is yours. Thank you to the third speaker. Hi everyone. I am Fitriani, as the first speaker, and now I will try to explain about gender in English. So, anyone knows what is gender in English? Okay, in English, nouns are categorized as three. The first is masculine, that refers to male. The second is feminine, that refers to female. And the third is neuter, that refers to the noun that we don't know the gender. Uh, these three categories are a system of grammatically gender that existed or famous in Old English. But for now, or in modern English, these three categories are still retained with relating to natural gender. Natural gender, it means that we need to use of certain pronouns to determine or to describe the gender of the noun. So, the pronouns that we can use, the first is he. He is similar with masculine, that refers to male. The second is she. She is similar with feminine, that refers to female. And the third is it. It is similar with neuter, that refers to the noun that we don't know the gender. So, these three, he, she, it that we used to determine or to describe the gender of the noun in modern English or now. But beside pronoun, we can also use some possessive pronouns to determine the gender of the noun. And the possessive pronouns that we can use, the first is his. His refers to male's mind. The second is her. Her refers to female's mind, and the third is its. Its refers to noun's mind that we don't know the gender. Jadi dalam bahasa Inggris itu terdapat istilah gender atau jenis kelamin. Dengan adanya istilah gender ini, maka noun atau benda dikategorikan menjadi tiga. Yang pertama yaitu maskulin yang merujuk pada laki-laki. Yang kedua yaitu feminim yang Feminim, yaitu benda yang merujuk kepada perempuan Dan yang ketiga yaitu Neuter ya, Neuter merujuk kepada benda-benda yang tidak diketahui Gendernya Nah ketiga kategori ini Maskulin, eh, feminim, neuter Ada dan terkenal saat Inggris dahulu Inggris zaman dahulu atau Old English Tapi untuk Inggris zaman sekarang 
ketiga kategori ini tetap dipertahankan dengan menggunakan pronoun atau kata ganti tertentu untuk menggambarkan dan menentukan jenis kelamin dari suatu benda. Adapun pronoun yang digunakan untuk menggambarkan atau menentukan jenis kelamin dari suatu benda di modern English sekarang ini, yang pertama yaitu he. He itu sama dengan maskulin, merujuk pada laki-laki. Yang kedua, she. She itu sama dengan feminim yang merujuk pada perempuan. Dan yang ketiga itu it. It itu sama dengan neuter yang merujuk pada benda-benda yang tidak diketahui jenis kelaminnya. Jadi, ketiga inilah, ketiga pronoun inilah yang digunakan saat ini atau English modern untuk menentukan jenis kelamin dari suatu benda. Nah, selain pronoun, posesif pronoun atau kata ganti kepemilikan juga bisa digunakan untuk mendeskripsikan atau mengidentifikasi gender dari suatu benda atau noun. Adapun posesif pronoun tersebut, yang pertama yaitu his. His ini merujuk pada kepemilikan laki-laki. Yang kedua yaitu her. Her ini merujuk pada kepemilikan perempuan. Dan yang ketiga yaitu its. Its ini merujuk pada kepemilikan benda-benda yang tidak diketahui undernya. Then I will try to give some examples that maybe help the audience to understand easily about gender in English. The first example. Tina went to the market yesterday. She went to the market with her mother. From this example, we can see that pronoun she and possessive pronoun her are referenced to female. So we can know that the person or someone went to the market yesterday is a female and also we can identify that Tina is a female jadi dari contoh pertama ini kita bisa melihat bahwa pronoun she and possessive pronoun her merujuk pada perempuan sehingga kita bisa mengetahui bahwa seseorang yang pergi ke pasar kemarin itu adalah seorang perempuan Nah, di sisi lain, kita juga bisa mengidentifikasi bahwa Tina itu adalah seorang perempuan dengan melihat pronoun dan posisi pronounnya yang merujuk pada perempuan. The second example. Mary talked to me. He told me that his father was sick. From this the second example, we can see that pronoun he and possessive pronoun his a reference to male so we can know that the person talk to you is a male and also we can identify that Mary is a male by look the pronoun he and possessive pronoun his jadi dari contoh kedua ini kita bisa melihat pronoun he and possessive pronounnya his yang merujuk pada laki-laki sehingga bis, kita bisa tahu bahwa seseorang yang berbicara kemarin itu eh, tentang ayahnya adalah seorang laki-laki nah di sisi lain kita juga bisa mengidentifikasi bahwa Mary itu adalah seorang laki-laki dengan melihat pronoun he dan possessive pronoun his yang merujuk pada laki-laki the third example is the car is ready it just needed a new point From this example, we can see that pronoun it refers to car as a noun that we don't know the gender. Because in this case, we really don't know the car is male or female. That's why we use pronoun it to determine or describe the meaning. Jadi, dari contoh, kedua, dari contoh ketiga ini, kita bisa melihat bahwa pronoun it merujuk pada car atau mobil sebagai benda yang tidak diketahui gendernya. Karena kita benar-benar nggak -benar tahu eh, car ini female or male. Oleh karena itu, kita menggunakan pronoun it untuk eh, mendeskripsikan bahwa car ini adalah noun yang tidak diketahui gendernya. So, from this material, gender in English, we can say that if you already know the gender of noun, maybe eh, female or male, You can use pronoun she 
or pronoun he to describe the noun but if you are if you don't know the gender of the noun you can use pronoun it to describe the noun thank you well we think that's all about our explanation we hope this video will be useful for the others will be useful for the audience thank you for watching uh, stay healthy stay safe and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh bye bye